Mm. It's true that today prices of some items, including different metals, are going up quicker than before. Of course, to protect your savings, you can invest your money, for instance, into gold. But it would necessarily be increasing its worth as rapidly as before, or else its cost may even decrease. Is there some sure way to increase the cost of gold or some other metals, for instance, with some chemical tricks? Hmm. Well, let's find out. Before talking to you about gold, I would like to consider some other chemicals first, which can cost hundreds and even thousands of times more than the chemical elements they were made of. For instance, there exists so-called heavy water, that is a compound of heavy isotope of hydrogen, deuterium, with oxygen. In our everyday life, we can encounter this chemical in regular seawater, but it happens quite rarely. On average, in 3200 molecules of regular light water, consisting of hydrogen and oxygen, there is only one molecule of heavy water. It's not that easy to separate heavy water from regular water. You need to either distill water for a very long time, that is to run water hundreds of times until heavy water starts accumulating, or you need to conduct a long electrolysis of regular water with the addition of electrolytes. At the same time, water will be breaking down into light hydrogen and oxygen, and heavy water will be accumulating in the solution. It is precisely because of the complexity of extraction of heavy water that one milliliter of it costs roughly one dollar, which is about one million times more expensive than regular tap water. Besides heavy water, there exist more expensive chemicals. For instance, this piece of so-called high-temperature superconductive ceramics, which today cost over 350 euros. If we put such a bar into liquid nitrogen and cool it to minus 196 degrees Celsius, the ceramics will lose all its electrical resistance and will become a superconductor. Because of that, any strong magnet will be suspended in mid-air near such ceramics because of the infinite eddy currents created in the superconductor, because it has got no resistance. Thus, the magnet can levitate over the superconductor until liquid nitrogen runs out and ceramics reach the temperature of over minus 100 degrees Celsius. After that, all quantum effects will be over. Admittedly, levitation is cool, but how can we make such unusual ceramics? To do that, we need to take several initial reagents, for instance, an oxide of such a rare earth metal as yttrium. It doesn't cost much, about 45 cents for 1 gram. Besides, you'll also need barium nitrate, which is also quite cheap, and little bit of copper, and also nitric and citric acids. To synthesize some superconductive ceramics, I took a little bit of yttrium oxide and dissolved it in an excess of concentrated nitric acid. Besides, because at a low temperature yttrium oxide doesn't dissolve well, I added bits of pure copper into the beaker. After that, copper immediately began to dissolve in nitric acid, thus heating up the mixture and helping yttrium oxide to better dissolve in the acidic medium of the solution at the same time creating copper and yttrium nitrates. After dissolving copper and most of the yttrium oxide, I'm heating up the mixture in a magnetic stirrer and adding barium nitrate to the solution. After that, I'm adding a little bit of water for all the components to dissolve well. Lastly, I'm adding some citric acid, and after that the color of the solution is changing to more bluish. Now what's left to do is to evaporate the leftover water from the solution, and to wait until all the nitrates in the solution start reacting with the citric acid, starting so-called pyrosynthesis. During this process, there will be forming a mixture of yttrium, barium and copper oxides from a mixture of nitrates of different metals, abbreviated IPCO. The process is really unusual and impressive. Still, after synthesis, the obtained mixture doesn't really look like superconductive ceramics. To make a superconductor from this mixture of oxides, first it needs to be crumbled, pressed and baked in a muffled furnace with the addition of oxygen. Besides, baking needs to be done with lowering of the temperature in order to create the needed crystals of the certain size and chemical composition, giving ceramic source very superconductive properties. And if everything is done correctly, then you can get a piece of high temperature superconductive ceramics from 160 grams of reagents. 
costing just $17, which will cost 20 times as much. Of course, technologies and equipment are needed, but I think if such superconductors are mass produced, then they will quickly recoup. Besides, today there is a great demand for them. Their use ranges from magnetic trains to superconductive wires in particle accelerators. Besides synthesis of ceramics, which requires a good command of physics and chemistry, you can also synthesize simpler chemicals, which are also highly profitable. For instance, you can synthesize gold compounds. Nowadays, the market price of gold is as high as never before, which is why many people are buying lots of it in order to protect their savings or buy gold generally. However, nowadays there are also other reasons to use this metal besides its beautiful look and resistance to corrosion. Nowadays, roughly half of all mined gold is used in the industries of advanced technologies. For instance, gold is used to make terminals of computer circuit boards, which are resistant to oxidation or for making COVID express tests with gold nanoparticles, which are very popular these days. That is why besides gold itself, today reagents containing gold are deemed valuable too. To make gold compounds, first gold needs to be dissolved in something. Most frequently, a mixture of nitric and hydrochloric acid is used, which creates what is known as aqua regia, which dissolves bits of gold fairly quickly. As a result, the mixture produces chloroauric acid, which is one of the most widespread gold compounds today. If you evaporate the obtained solution, you can get 1.95 grams of chloroauric acid hydrate, which costs over 500 euros. So, having certain skills in the field of chemistry, you can increase the cost of your gold tenfold and sell it, just by adding several chlorine, hydrogen and oxygen atoms to it. You might be wondering, who will buy such expensive gold compounds? For instance, jewelers often buy pure chloroauric acid for making a gold plating solution, which can be used to gold plate many jewelry made of less precious metals. That is why, now in chemistry, you can easily make money out of thin air, as it were, just by using your knowledge. Besides gold, you can also use this trick for another precious metal which is palladium. These days its price is dropping, which is why it can easily be bought for doing one more chemical trick. Just like gold, palladium can easily be dissolved in aqua regia and be used to synthesize chloropalladic acid, which is quite an essential compound in the industry. For instance, today it's used for making catalytic converters for cars. They are used to convert nitric oxides and carbon monoxide from engines into safe nitrogen and carbon dioxide. But still, the chloropalladic acid obtained as a result of the reaction of aqua regia with palladium is not very suitable for transportation and storage because of its property to easily soak moisture from the air and be oxidized by oxygen. Because of that, it's often evaporated until it's dry and then baked, creating a more storage-friendly palladium chloride which costs significantly more than pure palladium. You can obtain 1.7 grams of palladium chloride from 1 gram of the precious metal, and it will cost 6 times more than the initial metal. But the list of the precious metals doesn't end there. And besides gold and palladium, you can also earn money on one precious metal, which is osmium. This metal, besides being highly rare, is also the heaviest metal of all the known metals, with an insane density of 20.5 grams per cubic centimeter. This metal melting temperature is also insanely high, being 3045 degrees Celsius, which is why before it melts, osmium first oxidizes in the air when it's heated up, releasing highly toxic and volatile and expensive 8 valent oxygen oxide. If we take osmium powder and heat it up in a pure oxygen, then we can synthesize pure osmium tetroxide, which is in a great demand among microbiologists and also researchers in the field of organic chemistry. Many institutions are ready to buy this chemical for an astronomical price of 600 euros for one gram. However, this price is not baseless, because osmium tetroxide is insanely toxic chemical and besides it's very volatile, which is why its synthesis involves many risks. 
For instance, this substance easily melts and evaporates even when heated up slightly in a glass ampule, which is why if one accidentally shatters an ampule with this chemical on the floor, in a couple of days it can fill the room with toxic vapors. But still, if this chemical is an ampule, the formed osmium oxide vapors will immediately condense on the cool walls of the ampule, creating beautiful crystals. Of course, it's pleasant to observe such beautiful effects with toxic osmium tetroxide when it is encased in protective glass. Such ampules are opened only under a powerful film hood and in gloves. After that, osmium oxide can be dissolved in water and be used to make a solution for dying microbiological samples for transmission electron microscopes. Many scientific institutions use such equipment. Yes, as you can see, precious metals can cost several times more as compounds. And at the same time, having lots of super expensive equipment is not necessary. But making and selling of the next chemical requires quite a lot of financial input, for instance, a number with nine zeros. I'm talking about of the production of tritium, which nowadays is used in rather popular keychains, which can glow for up to 15 years without an outside source of electric current. Such a glow is a result of the breakdown of just several micrograms of radioactive tritium pumped into glass tubes coated with a special luminophore film on the inside. When tritium decays, it mainly releases beta particles, and when they collide with luminophore molecules, they release a light quantum, which depending on the luminophore composition, we can observe as glowing of the some form of visible light. Nowadays tritium is mainly extracted from Canadian heavy water reactors, which use that very expensive heavy water as neutron moderators. As a result of the reactor's work, some deuterium atoms can catch neutrons flying at them, forming tritium atoms. But still, synthesis of tritium from heavy water is a rather lengthy and not so effective process, which is used mainly for satisfying civil demands for tritium. For instance, it's used in keychains and laboratory research. This is exactly why nowadays one gram of tritium costs around $30,000. Besides being used for civil needs, from 2003 to 2006, tritium was also produced for military purposes in nuclear reactors by heating different lithium isotopes with a stream of neutrons, but evidently because of the some technical problems, its production came to a halt. Well, the time has come to tell you about the most expensive metal which I have ever seen in my life and which can also be sold for an impressive amount of money and it will cost 6.5 thousand times more than gold. I'm talking about a rather ordinary element, calcium, which in its pure form looks like shiny metal. But in this ampule I have one of the most widespread calcium isotopes, which is calcium-40. It's not radioactive and is present almost everywhere on our planet, which is why it's not that expensive. But there exists one more isotope of calcium, which is calcium-48, and there is just 0.14% of it on our planet. That is why it is extremely difficult to obtain it, especially using expensive magnetic separators, separating different calcium isotopes from each other, atom by atom. This is the reason why this metal's price is astronomical, and one gram of calcium carbonate 48 costs $245,000. After running chemical reduction, you can obtain a small piece of metallic calcium 48, one gram of which will cost 320,000 euros. This piece of calcium 48, weighing about 150 milligrams, cost like a new Tesla. This expensive isotope is mostly used in research in the field of nuclear physics, because calcium-48 isotopes are rich in neutrons, which makes it useful in synthesis of new elements. For instance, in Germany, scientists have conducted numerous experiments in which they synthesized super-heavy elements, which don't occur naturally anywhere on our planet, using heavy iron accelerators and calcium-48 ions. 
Here in GSI, calcium 48 ions accelerated to 10% the speed of light were used to synthesize a super heavy element called Moscovium, which on its alpha decay formed the most expensive element in the whole universe, which is Nihonium. One cast of 1 gram of Nihonium is almost beyond evaluation and will cost even more than our entire planet if all its elements were sold at some imaginary space market. This is explained by the extremely difficult synthesis of Nihonium, because the probability of synthesizing it with an accelerator is extremely small. You can bombard an emerition foil with calcium atoms for months, but get nothing out of it. It's a pity that in real life there is no anyone you can sell Nihonium to, because it's extremely radioactive and breaks down in just several milliseconds, which is why it can play a role only in fundamental science research as an extremely complex and unusual occurrence. Well, I think after watching this video, you learned about some expensive elements and about how to make and sell gold, costing several times more than the initial metal. And if you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see many more new and interesting 